So in the nutshell though, as an analogy, this passive house is like building your home into a fridge. Solar passive is turning your home into a solar panel. No. <laughs> Joseph, what's the main difference between passive house and solar passive? Passive house has a very stringent um, requirement and it has a certification process. So whenever a house is qualified to be called a passive house, it must go through a lot of loops and hoops and it has almost guaranteed performance. Mm -hmm. Plus, although passive house does not necessarily require mechanical system. However, the scheme and the program is heavily designed around a mechanically operated house. Passive solar design is very different, very, very different. Very loose. It is a very broad umbrella terms that cover a lot of principles and design strategies that try to take advantage from the ambient weather and the sun, yep. but it never ever guarantee certain condition because the origin of a lot of passive design principles, they are coming from the indigenous traditional knowledge from all the locals, how they built throughout hundreds and thousands of years to take advantage of the local climate. So to simplify it, Passive house is sort of like turning your home into an esky, and then solar passive design is picking and choosing when to absorb energy from outside depending on the season. Exactly. Plus, in passive house, you almost guarantee to have a comfortable indoor environment, but a passive solar design house, you always get improved indoor condition, but not guaranteed comfortable. If we can use cars as an analogy, yeah. passive house is like you need to build a car to enter Formula One com competition. Yeah, yeah. It needs to fulfill all the requirements list in the specification. But passive solar design is any car that can run, fulfill all the road worthy, plus some good optimization. So solar passive design is not policed. It, it's, a, it's an extremely broad yeah. umbrella term. Yeah. And energy can come in to the building envelope via glazing or via thermal mass brick products, is that right? On the heating dominated climate, yes. Wow. It can even use the soil warm material to be a temporary storage. Wow. So all the energy you absorb in the day can be released at night. In Areas like the, in the tropics, mm. passive solar design is a completely different kind of beast. Mm. It tries to exclude mm. any solar heat at all. But I guess from the perspective of passive house and combining some concept of solar passive means that you don't need, or well, with passive house, you don't need much energy, but you've got to be very careful how much energy you may introduce via a solar passive design, otherwise you could suffer from overheating. For passive house, even in a training course, they try to introduce a lot of concept about passive solar design into the passive house training material because it's a good practice to try to take advantage from our nature, our environment, whenever it's beneficial. But you also need to protect your building, your house, when the ambient condition is not favorable. Mm. All right, so yeah, very different concepts. They can be combined. Solar passive design isn't something that is guaranteed to give you a high performing building. You got to remember a lot of the passive solar design principle and rule of thumb, mm. they were derived from thousands of years yeah. of experience where they didn't have mechanical conditioning and all the indigenous local people can do is to take the most advantages out of the ambient climate and weather. Yep. But today, our design may slightly deviate from that 
because of course when they are favorable we take advantage of them but in the non-favorable time we should be allowed to shut it out from the indoor condition where we need to spend energy to condition it to maintain comfort